thank you for the privilege and the honor for me to be here. It is so exciting to know that the Lord has gave me a word to come and share with you this morning. But before I go and share my word that the Lord gave me, I need to tell you this morning I want to bring the word of your story. That is a story that needs to be told to the world out there. That's what we're here for, to receive from Jesus so we can go out and give it to the world outside. You know what? The, the devil, our enemy, is walking around like a lion. He's looking for someone to eat and destroy. And Monday night, just a quick testimony, Monday night I had a dream about a small snake on my bicycle's wheel. As I pushed it in the house, the snake is on the wheel and it fell off. So I went to the kitchen to get the spanner to catch the snake. But when I came back, the poison was lying on the floor and there was two bigger snakes. That one snake became two bigger snakes. So I went back to receive a bigger spanner to catch both of them. And the Lord showed me, we mustn't sleep in the garden. If Jesus asks us to pray, we must pray. Tuesday morning I woke up. I didn't have a voice. My old throat was sore. Wednesday I woke up. I've got sinus. My ears is closed. Thursday I felt bad. I wanted to phone Pastor and tell him, listen, I'm sick. I can't come to church. But the Lord showed me that we need to plead the blood of Jesus over ourselves. So what I've done is I've woke up when I said that dream. And I pray the blood of Jesus to protect me, my family, and everyone concerning close to me. And this morning, even still, I was not feeling very well. But you know what? We are more than conquerors through Christ that's giving us the power. So we are able to come and stand here and do what the Lord wants us to do. Because the enemy will do anything and he will put anything in your pathway to stop you from doing the will of God. So last Sunday pastor preaches about uh, Matthew 28 I want to read us Matthew 28 from verse 18 till 20 we all know that scripture from heart because that is the uh, instruction Jesus gave us so I'm just going to read it here and Jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you. And I, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. So why this was so catching for me, or so big impact? You know in the animation movie, where they draw pictures and that one oak suddenly realized something is happening and he's got a small globe going up here then it shows down a picture a globe that is what happened to me when I when pastor preaches the scripture because this was the last instruction Jesus Christ gave us to do so it's an important scripture that we need to give attention to to go out make disciples of all nations and that's the thing that we need to do so while I was busy with this, I had a, I asked Jesus, asked the Lord, Lord, how must we go out and preach the gospel? How must we go and tell the people? Because sometimes when you give the gospel, you are afraid. Because just now someone is going to ask you a question and you don't know how to answer him. All the difficult questions. And the Lord told me, go and tell your story. A story is there to be told. How the Lord changed your life how the power of the Lord worked in your life and how he's changed you to be the person you are now through the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. We are dead. So we need to be realize what is our story. So I've asked the Lord, Lord, but how are we going to do it? And I read this short story about the barber. This youngster, he's got his own business. He's a, a barber. He's cutting hair and shaving the people. But this oak was born with a little bit of a back uh, um, a dyslexia. He's, he's born with a problem. A 
Okay, let's leave it at the problem. So everything you do, you do it loud, you do it hard. If he cuts the hair, he touches hard. But the people didn't mind because he was a good barber. He cut hair beautiful. And this stranger go into this barber, didn't know what was happening. So he went in for a haircut, and this youngster cut his hair beautiful. So he already put the shaving cream here because he's going to shave him now. He pulled his hair backwards and he got the blade in front of him and he wanted to shave. And he realized he must share the gospel with this man. So he moved backwards and he walked around and stand in front of the hour with that blade in his hands and he asked him, are you ready to meet your creator? <laughs> so that's not definitely not the right way to go and preach the gospel to have the people afraid. So that oak ran. I'm dead sure the seed is sown in his life because you know he needs to meet his creator one or other way. But the Lord said to me that we're going to read in Acts just now about Paul, Paul, how he ministered. But before we go there, I just want to quickly tell you my story. Because my story is what the Lord has done for me, how the Lord has changed my life. I was working at the garage here down the road and uh, after work, it was on a Monday, I went up to Daisy Corner when Trevor had a shop there. And uh, every day with me and my wife is getting a half a bread and a half a liter of milk for free because it was difficult that time. And when Trevor asked me, what are you doing Wednesday night, 7 o'clock? I said, why nothing? What, is there something we need to do? He said, why don't we come to our home cell on Wednesday, 7 o'clock? I said, home cell, what, what's a, a home cell? So he said, no, just come to my place. So I went with my wife that Wednesday. We went up there. But prior to that, before we go, I had a battle inside of me. I hadn't that, didn't have the peace and the calm and the joy of the Lord because I didn't know it. I didn't know what it was about, nothing. So with that idea, because we battled, both of us were working we battle to keep the boat floating. Everything is expensive. There's no money. So it's really, it's tough. So we went up and I got there. Everyone's sitting there and they start reading the Bible. They give me a Bible. And I thought, what's this? What must I do with the Bible? I don't even know what to do with it. And they helped me going through the Bible. So that night when we were finished, I went home and I thought, hey, that was nice. Yeah, that was not too bad. And they invite me to come back the next Wednesday. So the next Wednesday I get there and the same thing happened. They gave me a Bible and they helped me. But it went a bit better this time. It was a little bit easier. And the people were so friendly. Yes, you don't expect that friendliness in this world today. And I went home again and I thought, yo, what an awesome time we had. And the third time they uh, invite us back to go back there. And the third time when I got there, we started reading the Bible. This time it was making sense to me. Every verse they read, I understand it. Uh, they're talking about the goodness of God. How perfect is God? What God has done for us? And how Jesus is working in our lives. So that night I go home and I'm happy. And I went home and I got to my room. And I wait on my knees and I start praying. And I said, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. Because I'm not perfect. You are perfect. So I, I asked the Lord to come in my life, in my heart, stay there and change my life. So the next Wednesday, we went back to the cell. And they look at me and they ask me, what did you do? I mean, what do you mean, what did I do? They say, no, you are looking different. So I said, maybe because I've asked Jesus to stay in my heart. And you know what? They are so happy. They put their arms around me and they start praying. They brought me to this church and they disciple me. They really spend time with me to make sure I'm on my road and I'm doing the right thing. I'm busy growing in the Lord. And I'm I appreciate the time that the people spent with me to disciple me to be where I am today. So if anyone here today doesn't have that story, telling you the Lord is there, just stick your hand out and ask him. He will answer you and he will touch you. I want to read this. I want to have a look at Paul, the amazing person he was. I want to read this Acts. Acts 26, I'm going to read verse 5, verse 10, 16, 22, 23, 27, and 29. That's the verses I want to read to us. And I bought this English Bible, and this is a Tao and a Dust. 
So just excuse me, please. Verse 5, they knew me from the first. If they were willing to testify that according to the stricter sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. Verse 10, this I also do in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received, have receiving the authority of the chief priests, and when they put to death, I had the case my voice against them. Um, 12, verse 12. As I journeyed to Damascus with authority of the commission of the chief priest, at midday, O king, Along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I hear a voice speaking and saying to me in a Hebrew's language, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goals. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus who you persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for the purpose to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. Verse 22. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other thing that those which the prophet and Moses said would come. 23 that the Christ would suffer, that he would be first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Verse 27 and 29. King Archarpa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Archarpa said to Paul, you almost pursued, pursued me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would, I would to God not that not only you, but also all those who hear me today might become both almost and together such as I am, except for this change, for the buya, the change. So what's amazing about this is if we have a look what Paul did to the Christians, he locked them up in prison. When they are put to death, he had the voice or the saying for them to put them to death. And you know what? All he had is the permission from the high priest. That's all he had. You know what? The people in verse 5 can testify about Paul's life, how he was a Pharisee, and how he prosecuted the Christians. What do we have? We have the authority of the one who created heaven and earth. And what more can we do than what Paul did? What's so amazing is, can we get people to witness for us, for who we are now and for what we were? Because Paul said the people can testify if they are willing. So how can the people testify in our lives? Can they see, okay, he was a in the world now is a Christian or do we still live undercover Christians without the working of the Holy Spirit in our life can the people really see Jesus Christ in your life that's why we are here to spread the good news that we need to do and Paul stood for what he believed no one could change his mind he knew what the prophet and Moses said about Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ loved us so much because he sent his only begotten son whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life and verse 17 said that God didn't send his son into the world to crucify the world but the world to be saved through his son so you know what we are saved through the son of God and that's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ went to prepare a place for us and he sent the Holy Spirit here for us as a comforter. So if Paul went out and stood for what is right, why can't we go and stood for what is right for our Jesus? Go out, preach our story to the world, because the world needs to hear 
our story in this world. And Paul, when he stood before King Agrippa, the fruit of the Spirit was in him. He had that fruit because the people can see the working of Christ in his life. So we need to bear the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5 verse 22 that I want to read to us, it explains to us there what is the fruit of the Spirit? What is the fruit that we need to carry out to the world so the world can see who we are for our Heavenly Father? And we are so privileged to can be able to call the Creator of Heaven and Earth our Father, our Friend. So Galatians 5, 22 and 23 tells us there, Gentiles, self-control. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing is there no law. So we know we don't fall under the law, but under the grace of Jesus Christ. And through the grace, we can have the nine fruits of the Spirit so that the world can see us through that Spirit. And the King Archerpa and all the others saw the fruit that Paul was carrying because the fruit that we carry is not for ourselves. The other people is eating our fruit. And to bear the correct fruit is important because we can't be an apple tree and bear peaches. We need to bear apples so that the people can eat them from our trees. And what Paul did with the fruit he carried the king and all the people there, they, they almost convert to be Christians. Like, I, like it seems. Okay, so our lives need to make a difference. We need to go out and tell our story. Because every story of us is a unique story. It's a personal story between you and God. That is to show the power that the Lord has done in your life. That is the way to preach the gospel, to show the people that God exists and they can make a difference and the people can testify how we were and how we are. And we are not ashamed to stand for what Jesus has done for us, but we can go in this world and proclaim Christ as our Father in heaven. So after we've got the fruit of the Spirit now, Paul also tells us in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, what we need to do to go and proclaim the gospel. So if we have a look at uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to tell the Jews, I become Jews. And to the Jews, Jews, I become Jew, that I may win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I may win those who are under the law. To those who are, are without the law, as without the law, not being without the law towards God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. To speak, uh, to the weak, I become weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means win some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be a partaker of it with you. So here they say, if we go out and spread the gospel, we are all partakers in the gospel. We are all partakers in Jesus Christ as one body because we are all children of God. And the, the, if, our, if we as fathers know how to do good for our children, how much more will our Heavenly Father do good to us if we just rely and wait on Him? Because God came to this world as the light and we need to go and shine the light to the world out there. So now we know how we need to go and spread the gospel. We must be symbolized 
with the people because you can preach you can bring beautiful scriptures but your story is the same with everyone every one of us has got a story doesn't matter who you are if your story you think it's very bad if you listen to other people we all got the same story and to tell that story to the people we become partakers in the body of Christ and that is what we are here for to become that so now we know to become not we mustn't do what they do but we must just go out to them and tell them about Jesus now Paul is going to tell us how to do it if we look at 1 Timothy 4 11 and 16 These things I command and teach. Let no one despite your youth, but be example to the believers in the world, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. The love. Look at that word. Everywhere you see the word love, you know that's the love of God for us. And we need to show the people that love, the love we receive from Jesus. We need to go and show them the same love. That's what Paul said here, in love. Till I come, give attention to reading and uh, to the doctrines. Do not neglect the gifts that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecies, which the laying on the hands of the elders. So we need to pray for the elders of the church the pastors, the cell leaders, because the attacks on their lives is extremely high. I've just explained to you about the attacks on our lives. So we need to be quiet and still and know that Jesus is our Lord for us to work, to live in to live in abundance, um, to have what God wants us to give to us. So we need to go out and tell the people about the work God done in our lives. Because it's only through Jesus Christ that we can change. You know what? We are nothing without the Lord. Like a farmer when he's sitting on his tractor and he's plowing the, the, the ground. He doesn't look backwards, otherwise he's going to go skew. He's got the focus point in his life and that focus point is Jesus Christ. So to plow straight so we can size seed, put the seed in the ground, the good seed. So we need to go out, put the good seed in the ground. Because seed takes the time to grow. And if we sow the seed now, we're not going to reap the same seed. We're going to reap the seed that other people already sow. So the word say, the, the us is, is, is ripe. So we must just go out and do the will of God. And to go out and do the will of God is to go out and tell our story. Tell our story to the world so that they can see us in what we are and what we are here for. And that they can see there is a change in our life. So my wish this morning is that I want to pray for everyone to really get not being called of telling the story, but to have that excitement to go out and tell the story. Because at first, when I just became a Christian, I just wanted to go out and tell the story and share it with everyone so everyone can have what I've got. But after a while, I'm starting to become a little bit cold. I didn't have that first love of Christ, that passion to go out and spread my story to the world. So I want to pray for you now so that you can receive that first love of Christ, so that you can have that willingness that, that to go out and preach our story to the world so that the world can rely on us or that God can do. So because that we can do the calling of God, the most important one that he said to us, the last one that he told us to do, 
so we can be obedient to that. So let's close our eyes out to a prayer for us. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that we are here in this building as one body before you to honor you, to praise you, to lift your name on high. Jesus, I want to pray today that you will break the walls on every heart here. Lord, take the heart of stone out and put the heart of flesh inside so that they can hear your voice, so that they can really experience the Holy Spirit working in their lives and that they can come before you with an open heart, with clear conscience to pray with you, to honor you, to glorify you. And Jesus, thank you for every person sitting here to listen to my story, the story you put in my life, the story that you use to form my life like you can use it for other people out there. And touch every heart, every mind, and every soul. And that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.